In this uh, short time, I want to share with you uh, my experience of 40 years more working with and in uncertainty. And uh, what I like to do is uh, to do it through a couple, two or three illustrations, like snapshots of that transition from the beginning when I started to work on uncertainty uh, in the 70s, 80s, uh, to uh, today. Now, uh, and a lot of this is uh, my, the work I did with, uh, I still do with Jerry Rabbits, which unfortunately couldn't be here uh, with us. Now, uh, probably uh, the first illustration, probably uh, many of you remember uh, uh, the Rio conference in 1992. It was the Conference United Nations on, on the environment. And uh, well, I was there with the, and in particular, I want to remind you of a chapter that was called the Agenda 21. And specifically, one of the articles in, uh, in Agenda 21 that was called Principle 5, that's known as the precautionary principle. Now, in the meetings we had, where we had the discussions about drafting uh, the principles, let's say, everybody knew, and we were talking, that, well, that the whole thing was about politically, political legitimacy in a context of scientific uncertainty. Okay, uh, to unpack this uh, sentence uh, will need a lot of time, so I don't have to. Uh, but substantially was about, uh, as I say, I repeat, about uh, what, how do you legitimate action in the face of scientific uncertainty? Okay, now it's interesting that when you realize, when you read principle five, the text, that the word uncertainty is not mentioned. And uh, I will read what it says. It says, lack of full scientific certainty. Now, a question for you to reflect is, and those who have experience in, in drafting this type of articles, you know that you don't put more words than necessary uh, because that has to do with agreements and, you know. But the fact is that the drafting group decided to use this long sentence of characterization saying lack of full scientific certainty instead of scientific uncertainty. So uh, immediately have uh, two questions which I won't answer. But question. The first is why? And the second is, is scientific uncertainty the same as lack of full scientific certainty? These are very important questions that have to do with a particular moment on time and also with the subject of, uh, of this meeting, which is political uh, uh, the political and strategic aspects of uncertainty. The next snapshot is about 10 years later. And 10 years later, what you have is uh, people started to write about uh, the strategic role of uncertainty. And you had papers and books talking about the fabrication or the manufacturing of uncertainty. Uh, I think Andy and perhaps Brian, who is there at the back, remember uh, in particular David Make Michaels from the, when we did the, uh, the, the Euro European Environmental Agency book on late lessons. And they, Mike, David Michaels, an epidemiologist, uh, 
American. He writes a book which I wrote. It was called a, a, a Doubt is Their Product. But there were several papers that he wrote about precisely the, uh, uh, the strategic use of uncertainty. In particular, as you can imagine, it was related to uh, corporations and lobbies uh, that used uncertainty uh, to, to fight uh, regulation. Okay? Now, uh, the point I want to make, and the, and the question is this. Uh, uh, when you say fabrication of manufacturing uncertainty, immediately you think about something negative. You know, you don't say manufacturing, or, you know, fabricating. So uh, at the same time, we know that science and technology are great producers of uncertainty. So the question is that I will put to you. How do we distinguish the good uncertainty from the bad uncertainty? The uncertainty that it is just part and parcel of uh, the scientific work and the uh, deployment of technology from that that it is used strategically or politically okay, to uh, delay or stop regulation. And also, in my own experience, is uh, I remember first years we used to work mainly in relation to nuclear power on risks and the other thing, we were using strategically uncertainty. And then it's the corporation. So we can say that in these years, you could see how everybody learned how to use or play the uncertainty game. How am I doing? Okay, uh, just uh, to uh, finish uh, and leave those questions open, I can say in my perspective that what I see is that in relation to uncertainty and with uh, is the trajectory of uncertainty in years I've been working on is quite similar to the trajectory of a word that it is related, which is complexity. So at the beginning, the purpose was to reject uncertainty and complexity. Perhaps, as Andy mentioned, through tra transform or reduce all uncertainty into risk. Okay. Uh, later, what I saw is that uncertainty and complexity was uh, accepted, let me use the word, but it was judged as a mistake of nature. And thus, the role of science and technology is just to produce uh, fixes in order to correct that mistake. Thank you.